I'm Seamless, and today is Monday, which means it's time for a new Track from Scratch stream. Today I'm going to be continuing the uh, little funky thing that I was making, I've been making so far. Uh, I'll play what I got so far. This is basically just twice the same thing. I was just blocking this out last time, but this is pretty much what I've got right now. I'm pretty sure the sound is okay, but uh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Duct tape, a bunch of matches, a skateboard, and a, bo and a bottle of dew. Not totally sure what that guy was meaning when he said that, but yeah. So, um, I was listening to this before the stream got going, and what struck me actually with the drums, because I, I got a pretty okay handle on the kind of sounds I want to have in the song. I might do more things, but they are not placeholder anymore. However, the drums very much are still placeholder, and they kind of show. So, I'm going to see what I can do about that. As much as I like this kick, it's not really fitting with, with our with our goal here. I might integrate Superior Drummer because I, I knew I thought that I wanted to do that earlier, and that could be a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> I am, however, gonna uh, get a, get a more like synthy sounding kick because like there's a lot there's a lot of like harmonic activity in there that I'm not totally sure about. So let's go. These kind of things. Yeah. So some of that's now it's gonna be mixed incorrectly because of this. Man, the new EQ is weird. I'm slowly getting used to it though, so that's uh, that's good. I love that the channel settings window for things is actually integrated into the into the actual thing. Like it's up here. I don't have to have another actual plugin to do anything with it. It's all it's just there. I don't have to find it. It's not behind Windows. Oh man, that was so good. Uh, yeah. Now the snare. Initially, when I picked the snare that I had, I wanted to go for um, a little bit of that kind of doofy, distorted snare tone, but not like a lot of it. But now what I have here is almost not doofy enough. What I mean by doofy is this sort of that feel. That sound, that like boop sound is, is the result of what happens when you distort that 200 hertz tone Either like independently or just in the snare, but yeah. Also, really quick, I want to try. I, mean, I, I can see it doing it. That's just odd. I guess I won't try it now, but yeah, let's try and find something else. I've used that a lot. Yeah, I'm into this, but I don't want to be as long. Nice, and I can also pitch it up a bit. What the fuck happened? Oh, because it's... Huh? Did I miss? No, it put it in here and in here for some reason. Did I have them both selected for something? That's weird. That was a hat once upon a time. <clears throat> oh, whatever. New hat. Oh, hey, it's Sadowick. <laughs> we vector now, he says. Yeah. 
It's a lot of fun. I'm actually like I, I'm running. I'm doing a 1080p monitor right now, but I'm looking forward to eventually when I get a higher resolution monitor. Because one of the problems with the old inter, the old FL interface was that it was bitmap based. It was all just it was all the resolution that it was, and that was all it was ever going to be. So if you had a large resolution monitor, it was still the same like pixel amount. It's like from here to here is a certain number of pixels, and it's like today it's like let's like whatever thirty pixels, and then like. T- you know, a monitor that's four times the, the resolution is going to say that um, this 30 pixels is now one fourth the size that it was, and it's just going to be really tiny and, and practically invisible. But now we can vec- we can actually um, you can come up in here into the general settings and you can actually scale the the pixel density so that things actually get bigger. And so that means that I could have a higher resolution interface on a higher resolution monitor. I can control that anyway. It's a lot of fun. I have a reason to do that right now because my um, my monitor's 1080p. It's just not a not a lot of what to do. Yeah. Okay, so that might sound better. Except the part where we can't hear the hats anymore. that i don't have the swing on Let's see is this global swing <clears throat> or is that per pattern it's global okay which means if i wanted to do that i need to do it in the piano roll what are some of these muted or is that Oh, I get it. Those are the other, those are their steps. All right. I understand now. Pressing this, am I? That's also a lot of that. Holy balls. Someone just dumped an incredible amount of images <laughs> in the chat. Wow. That's a lot. Oh, yeah. Capture layer windows. Is that even on? Really hope it is. It's not. Cool. Smart. It's on now. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. Dear God. Oh, it, I'm, a, I'm a dumbass. I, I forgot that I moved the drums bus over here. <laughs> ah. I suppose this is actually going to be a bit off now. Where's my kick? What the fuck? Why is this that now? <laughs> What? Why? Do I have... Uh Y'all saw that, right? I clicked on this and it like replaced the other guy. (laughs) 
Somebody in the chat has asked how I get my streaming to work my audio device, and the answer is I don't. I have a hardware mixer with all my weird patching, all the patching coming out and coming back in, so that I don't have to worry about any of that. I am not using a software-based solution, although there are some software-based solutions, I just don't use them. Uh. crazy the chat says of course none of these other guys have the uh hat pattern that i have in the first one yeah okay oh yeah well here's something really funny so this this pattern See how like it's doing the swing here, even though this is like this is these are sequencer notes in here. But that's because you can have the piano roll and the sequencer notes open at the same time, and you're just moving where those sequence notes are notes are, and they're still they're still there, which is just crazy town. It's crazy town. It's now way louder than I needed to be. So. Yeah, so anyway, uh, what are you doing? This might have been a, bit, a poor choice. I'm going to bring it back to, uh... What does the pretty balance do exactly? Is it just for volume automation? Yes. That's entirely what it's for. I use it because um all there's there's a lot of ways to control volume for a particular thing, obviously. So like in in here this is the sidechain channel. I could have automated the fader, I could have automated this guy in here, I could have automated each individual thing's volume and that kind of thing. But the reason why I use the balance is because it does not have smoothing. That's why I have this limiter here. It's not actually doing anything. I have this here because I want to monitor what this is doing to the sound. We see these big old holes in here. This is this is the automation for this for what it's doing. Because if I were doing this with the fader on the mixer, the mixer fader, it has smoothing on it. Like not the smoothing that I don't have control over. I have control over this smoothing, which I'm actually using a little bit, I think. No, I'm not using it at all. See the smoothing on in here. And even though these guys don't have smoothing on by default, it does still do it, which means that the really fast, really precise automation that I'm doing is not actually going to fully get through. So that's why I use the balance, because it does not have smoothing. <laughs> Uh, somebody just asked, I heard that most mastering engineers use 44.1 GHz on CY. That's because playback is 44.1. That's pretty much it. You can work with higher sample rates. You can work with higher, you know, crazy, you know, file formats or whatever. But at the end of the day, if you're making consumer music, the consumers are going to listen to it on 44.1 on iPod headphones and that kind of thing. So it's almost pointless to try and, you know, get better than that. Unless you're trying to sell like super high def, super whatever music. And the other part of it is that just because higher than 44.1 is almost never noticeable. You might notice it. You might have hearing that can tell the difference between 44.1 and like 
96k and then 192k and that whole thing but you are an, an incredible minority which is like you might be thinking yeah hey, cool i have really great hearing and that is really good it's really good you can do that but for consumer-based music that is a wasted effort because nobody else can so that's what's up with that hats seem quite quiet yeah that's because i turned it down that's kind of a thing that i wanted to do all right so like I, i'm gonna leave the drums alone for a bit i'm gonna come back to the actual derp the derp derp one this, remember how I said that I'd come back to this sound and not like it? Well. You know what I hate about it? I hate the octave. Because this is an octave higher than the other guy. Even this guy has kind of an octavey, octavey thing going on, but why? It's because of the way that the, because of this, actually. That would be the day. This guy kind of needs some beefing up, too. I still haven't fixed my compress my my phasing these guys' problems, although it's not that big a deal for now. It may yet require 
solutions to this in the future, but I can live with it for the moment. That's kind of fun. And just for kicks. And Seven Minutes Dead is here. Hello, Seven Minutes Dead. Although at this point, I'd say you're considerably more than seven minutes. You've been a while, been around for a while. <laughs> lol, lol, lol jokes. sound again. <laughs> it's just I already hate it. Square 
version definitely does sound better, doesn't it? All right, so I had a plan about this guy. Of course, now that sounds stupid. So after the drop, That might be kind of weird. <laughs> The subs just like not paying it, not even like related to what's happening right now. That's okay, I'll fix that in a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sound of some kind someone mentioned that someone suggested doing a super sauce dab and that might be a thing i do but i am thinking something kind kind of new let's just paint something new we all like sound design do we not so let's design us up some sounds i'm thinking a reese i'm thinking something hammer based made in a while oh you know what i can do now you know what i can do i can do manual reese you know what i mean by that i mean finding the goddamn envelope controller that's the form of the controller that's the peak controller wait the envelope controller is it is one of these yeah okay he 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 so i need two of these because reasons. Watch this. Uh, so let's say. Alright, 
This is actually going to be kind of confusing. <laughs> Right-clicking. That's that's plenty fast, I think. So it's from center. Kind of right there seems. Oh well, we can control this manually. So watch this. Activate. I gotta get rid of this. All right. Uh, this guy, LFO. Yoink. Whoa, wrong buttons. Um, output. Articulator one. This guy. Articulator. My hair is here's a big fun. The speed of this guy is going to be activated, and the keyboard control of Articulator one is going to control this guy. So not you. But you. <laughs> so I actually didn't want to do an LFO out of here. I wanted to do. Actually, I just wanted to do keyboard control. Why did I do this? I might still use. I might still use this, but it's actually not what I wanted. I wanted that. Right. So I need to um. So what I've done here is I've made the keyboard control output, you know, is making it go faster based on one note I'm playing, which is kind of like what happens when you want to do a Reese, just with usually with phase cancellation being the thing that creates the, the motion. But now I can actually make other parameters be what I, what I want to control the motion. The weird part being that um, this guy doesn't actually restart every time, but we can actually make it do that. You wanna know how? Instead of having speed on, I'm actually gonna link um, the LFO to this. So I actually did wanna do it like that. Ah, weird. So for this, this one's gonna be a bit weird though, because um, I want the LFO to be maximum, but I want the bass to be higher. I need, I need this to be the opposite of what it was. So, wing. So that should be outputting movement, but it's not, and there's reasons, because this is articulated one. I got it. I See, it's doing it. So wait, this, this is, um... This guy. Control this guy. At least I'm trying to. Huh? All right. So it knows it's supposed to be doing something. This is offset motion speed. I don't need this. So this is not coming out for some reason. I know it's not because of this. I had I had a problem with that before. Uh, uh, what? Oh, I'll leave that, leave that alone. See, that's moving it, but this is, this is not moving it. Why isn't this moving it? I am articulated one, right? That's what I put out. Yeah, articulated one. Do I need to be? That should be moving. You should totally be moving. We. 
and it knows it should be moving. Once it moves, it goes to the position that the base is set. So this is controlling it, but this for some reason isn't. I put continuous output on, right? Yeah. Just for shits, let's trigger this with MIDI. And that worked great. Cool. So continuous mode didn't do shit. <laughs> That's just weird looking. Oh, it's because of the phaser shape. Um, that is, what the fuck is that in the gate? Because uh, it's probably triggering the envelope now. Um, yeah. fast. So it doesn't appear to be max. I kind of want it to be max. Did I change the, the bass? Bipolar, unbipolar. So now, why isn't that doing anything? I mean, he's kind of doing his job. Let's see what happens when. See, I'm in harmon harmonic mode. So that means when I fuck around with this. That happens. I really, uh, see, so I kind of wanted to smoothly go through them. I mean, I, I, the shape I have right now is not really doing that. Because when I was doing this, that's, not, that's actually a little better. Yeah, I really feel like this is not going fully the way it should. Just in case it's being stupid, let's actually attach the LFO to a secondary controller such as this. So it's definitely only going halfway through, which is kind of weird, but I can control for that. Or can I? It's going below it. Why is he going below it? It's because this. Now it seems to think it's going. Do like a quarter of it. Three quarters of it. This is a lot weird. That's the last half of it. That's the whole thing. Cool. Well, it's not the whole thing, though. Or is it the whole thing? That. I mean, this says it's doing the whole thing, but it doesn't look like it is. Whatever. Whatever. What the fuck ever. Thank <laughs> you. 
The shape of the weirdness is happening in here when you're on harmonic mode is a result of what the unison is doing. And so if I turn the unison off, it's going to, it's going to, um, stick away the uh, thing that's making it do what it's doing. So. I don't really enjoy. What if I made the LFO a sawtooth? And yes, actually, that's something you can do because right now we're doing the reasoning thing, but it's manually controlled. I mean, it's, a, it's an automatic process, obviously, but like we're controlling it directly as opposed to it being a process of phase cancellation. So I can do stuff like. Which is weird. The loop that we're seeing here isn't actually looping just one shape of this. It just means that the LFO is going continuously. <laughs> be weird what did I not So that's the end of part one. Come back for part two where I continue to do things that I don't totally understand.
If you have any questions about this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day. Now I'm going to wait a couple seconds. And then part two is going to start. Actually, first I'm going to restart the thing.